Alrighty, in today's video, we'll be using Notion formulas to create statuses based on connected select properties. Let's say you're using a select property to keep track of several different options. We want to create a status based on the different selected responses, and let's say a few or a handful of these different entries with different select responses are connected to another database. You want to assign a status based on the best or worst selection. We're going to be starting with two databases, one for a client and one for meetings. These are just arbitrary examples in which many meetings might happen with a client, and we're going to want to choose from the best of those meetings a select property status that we could specify through a relation. So we'll start by creating a select property. I think we can also use a multi-select property if we want. This example is ideal for highlighting the best possible outcome and one outcome across a filtered set of relational criteria. And when we're going to be using the ifs and contains filter formula, the ordering of status of the formula matters. We're going to want to start with the best to worst unless you're actively seeking out the opposite scenario of worst to best. And so let's just create several outcomes. Maybe we're going to be creating a five star status outcome based on the select properties that we can toggle during our meetings. I'm just going to think of five easy ways to describe how a meeting might have gone. So I'll say it was okay, it was good, it was great, it was awesome, or it was top tier. And as you can imagine, okay is probably the worst, good is slightly better. As you go down grades, average, awesome is above average, and top tier is like the best you could get. We are create statuses based on all the select properties that we might assign, and we will try to extract the best outcome of those selected or relationally connected select properties. We're going to start with that ifs function. I'm going to add a few new lines with shift enter, and we want to reference the select property of the related entries. And the reason why we want to start with either the best or worst outcome is because we are selecting from all possible entries. We're going to be extracting the best one from a hierarchy perspective. So if we start with the best outcome, it'll always show the best outcomes first and proceed any of the other outcomes. Because we are extracting the select property, we need to specify and filter and assign if a select property is this, then assign this status. Because we are going to be using a relation, we want to reference the meetings that we want to filter by. With dot notation, we could do dot filter to start that filtering of that relationship. And we want to think about which property that we're going to be trying to manipulate. We always start with the current variable now with the Notion Formulas 2.0 update. And now with the dot notation, we can add a period and it'll suggest all the properties that we might want to reference. In our case, because we are focusing on the select property, we can conveniently select the select. And now we're referencing the current select property of the relation connected to meetings. The way that we're going to be able to select specific statuses and extract them is by using the contains formula function. The contains formula function allows us to view the whole list of select properties that might be relationally connected to the client database. And even if we were to use multi-select properties, we can reference all of the possible outcomes. And that's exactly why we're going to be using the contains formula function as opposed to an exact filter via a text. So now we want to specify exact text. Let's select the best outcome, which we want to highlight our meeting. So we're going to start with our best select option. Remember, this is case sensitive, and so it's going to be important that you get the exact text. And we want to make sure that top tier is within the current select property. So now we've basically created this contained approach to how we can create a status when top tier happens. In our case, we might want to add it some text, but in other cases, you might want to just use an emoji. I like this use of the star. I'm going to quickly reference that star emoji with a colon and type in star, and I'm going to add a star. And because we've created five different select options, I'm going to create the best outcome of five stars for when the current select property meetings contains top tier as a selection. As you can imagine, now that we have the initial outcome selected, we're basically going to be using a similar formula structure. We can control copy, add a comma, so we can include our next line. Remember I copied it, I'm going to paste it again, comma, shift enter, paste it, comma, shift enter, paste, comma, shift enter, paste. And then the last thing we want to also output if it's none of these is shift enter and empty quotation. Notice how the error disappears, and now we have our five different filtered statuses that we might to edit. Now we can delete a star. 
from each line, increase it every time. So now we have five stars to one star based on those five select properties that we specified. And as you can imagine, you can just go back into the quotation, use control backspace as a shortcut to delete entire words at once. And now we have a very fast way in which we've created a status based on connected select properties. The key here is we're using the contains function and then specifying the text as opposed to setting the property exactly equal to a certain text. And we're saying if it does contain it, then show this. And because we're doing it from best to worst, it will always read from the best possible outcome and then work its way to the worst possible outcome. So that if you have 10 different meetings, for example, and none of them are higher than awesome, it'll always extract the highest. And if we were to reverse this order where we specify one star first and then work our way down to top tier, the outcome will always start with the first or the worst status. And so this is all to say that the ordering of the ifs formula does matter. I think you have to think about whether you want to order from best to worst or from worst to best when you're thinking about creating these statuses because we are just creating a singular outcome based on a group of related entries. So we're not creating an entry for each connected entry, but we're taking the best and worst possible outcomes of the many relational connections that a singular database might have. And now we can say, well, we had 10 meetings, but none of them were that awesome. Nothing was that great. And so maybe that's one way to think about not having the best experience working with this client, or maybe we're not having the best experience recording the connected database entries within the grand scheme of things. So now if we change the select option to OK, it'll be a one star status. If I have another meeting that's good, it'll upgrade to two. If I do top tier, it jumps to five. Now you can sort of understand how the hierarchy works. So if I make this a great, the highest of the three, which is great, will be the status of the client. So if I were to upgrade this to awesome, it'll jump to four. If I change this to good, nothing happens because awesome is still the highest status that we can achieve from these select properties. And so that is what that means when we talk about hierarchy. We can also use these outcomes as a way to group the status. If the, we change awesome to top tier, the client changes to there. Change this to great to three. If we remove both greats, it's going to downgrade to two with good. OK, change that to one, so on and so forth. That is the formula in action, extracting from the best possible outcome and assigning a status for that client and extracting for the meeting status in this case. Hopefully this example of a client and a meeting didn't confuse you. I think this is just another way in which we can copy and paste. Something like this might take less time than you actually think when you see it at the very end. This is very easy. Obviously, if you're going to add more select properties, you're going to need to manually copy and paste and then create a separate outcome and then order it appropriately so that you can decide when certain things appear. If you're interested in more videos like this, check out Notion Formulas 2.0 playlist. That's got other similar examples and case studies and tutorials on how you can do more with Notion Formulas 2.0. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.